Hey guys, well, Grayson Abbey here. Today we want to go over a quick video of how to update your Radio Master MT12. When these things first came out, um, they didn't have all the protocols and there's been a lot of advancements in the protocol selection for the 4-in-1 module as well as firmware updates since the original radio has been released. Um, so as of today, I believe it's 2.1 is the current firmware. Uh, so we're gonna show you a quick video on how to update the firmware at home, really easy with basic tools. All you need is a computer to update the sucker. So let's dig into it. We've got a brand new radio here. This one's already been updated, so I don't wanna cheat and use that. So we're gonna take a brand new radio here and update it from out of the box. So let's get the sucker here, get it out of the box. Is this ELRS? Four this one? is a four in one. So mm -hmm. the, the firmware is going to be the same except for ELRS. What you'll need to update ELRS the uh, firmware differently than a four in one. But the four in one has more steps to it. So we're going to do that one today. That's what most people are probably going to get for the MT12. Mm. Smell yeah, that, that, new, that new car the smell. New car smell. All right. Take new radio with the battery pack. Come on over. All right. So. It's edgetx.org, so we're going to go there, and the other website we're going to go to is multimodule.org. Those are the two websites we're going to need to update the 4-in-1 version of the Radio Master, okay. MT12. So, first thing you're going to do is click on edgetx.org. Okay, if you like this video, subscribe. I'm going to go to Get EdgeTX, then we're going to scroll down to the online tool, EdgeTX Buddy. Click that there. Now we got it here. So, what we need to do is you will be connected to the internet and all that. Um, Edge TX Centurion 2.1.0.1. That's the current as of this video. So, we're going to select it. Then we have to select the radio model. Scroll down. Radio Master MT12 is what we're doing today. We're going to click that. Okay. Now, okay. got that here. Notice I do not have batteries in the radio yet. I have not done that. Is that on purpose or did you yes. forget? Okay. I'm gonna do this on purpose. Um, the radio seems to flash better when there's no power to it. So I'm gonna leave this aside. This is the battery pack. We will need a USB-C cord, which I have floating over here with my tangled mess of wire. I need to get a new USB-C hub. If anyone wants to send me one, feel free. So. Okay. Into the side here, we're going to plug okay, in, okay. into the data port, Okay. plug in our USB-C. Now this side obviously goes to the computer. This is going to be connected to the computer, mm -hmm. and then we're going to flash via USB. Nothing's here. Add new USB device, and we're going to look for this one right here, STM32 bootloader. Um, the reason I do this without the battery, it forces it into bootloader mode to get that detected. If you have a battery on it, or if the radio is on, it can bypass that. It might boot up and then bypass the bootloader. So we need this bootloader here. We're gonna to connect to that. And then we're gonna hit, now that we have that selected, you'll see it's selected and your numbers may be different. That's like more of like a serial number and port numbers and stuff. We're gonna click next here. And then firmware is going onto this radio. And we're gonna hit start flashing. And it'll take a few minutes here. It's gonna download the firmware based off your internet speed, it may be faster, maybe slower. So once you click the download, it's gonna erase the firmware that's on it, on the SD card and the radio. Um, it's gonna flash new firmware. All right, so we're almost done. So it'll take, on average, if you got a decent computer, this is just, the, I'm just running this off a laptop right now. Uh, expect probably five minutes or so to flash the firmware for the new Edge TX on it. 8800. All right, so that took about two minutes. Now you see the flashing done. Now you want to update the SD card contents. So you can either click here wait, or you can wait, click wait, up hold here. On, stop. Do it, the SD card's already included. With SD that, card's right? in it. So for this, we will need to connect the battery because we do need to get into a menu of the radio. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug the, that so I don't break any USB ports off. <laughs> Accidents happen, you know. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the battery. And put that down in there. And close it up so I don't drop it. Okay. All right, so the battery's in. I'm going to turn on the radio. With Welcome the radio on, we are going to plug in the USB-C on the side. Don't worry about that part. So when we plug in the USB-C on the side, 
is going to give three options, joystick, storage, or serial. We're going to select storage. Click the storage button. And you'll hear, usually on a Windows computer, you'll hold the, you hear the ding, and then your folders open up. Just go ahead and close that for now. And we're going to click set up your SD card or SD card content at the top. Um, from there, select SD card. And usually it'll automatically go to that folder that popped up last, but if it doesn't, you go to this PC, you'll see your devices, you got your USB drive. It's gonna be about a 500 megabyte SD card that comes with it. Uh, so 479 is the actual, we'll click that. Select folder, view files, yes. Save changes, yes. And we're gonna make sure the latest pack is version 2.1. And we have a Radio Master MT12. I'm gonna make, select English. Now make sure you have a couple of different options here. You got different foreign languages and stuff like that, uh, or native languages to you. <laughs> um, but English, there's a couple of different variations of English from uh, Libby, Ryan, Guy, uh, Michelle, and Sarah. We're just gonna select the standard one, but make sure it is highlighted. If it's not highlighted, it won't flash, so you make sure it's highlighted. Then click Apply Changes. And then it's gonna take a few minutes to remove unnecessary files on the radio, on the SD card, and then it'll start loading you'll see a detail bar pop up here that you can click and you can see it more prog uh, progression as the number goes up. But it might take a couple minutes here to remove the data. Um, this is an experimental design from HTX. So if you do have an issue where it freezes or does anything weird, you can simply unplug, go back into the SD card selection, plug it back in and start the process over again. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, so you'll see right here, the details thing popped up. And it's writing, that's what took so long is it was writing those files and now it's working on the sound card. So this is all the sound pack files it's currently writing and adding to the radio. The SD card upload usually takes, and again, anywhere from two to roughly five minutes on average for most people uh, with your the normal computer, stuff like that. Um, and then once that's done, then we'll go to the next step. So this will, yeah. All right, so fast forward a little bit, it is still going. It's been about four minutes or so and that's done. So after that, there's only one step left. The SD card has been updated, all that's good. We need to go to multi-module. It's a new org. website. This is a different website. And then we're gonna go to, phone's in my face. <laughs> Firmware download. Click here at the top. We're gonna select our module. This is a Radio Master, again, MT12. And we're gonna do the four and one. And then leave those. You don't really need to do anything there. I'm just gonna download the AETR. And so we're gonna do this and we're gonna do save as. And then we're gonna find our SD card on our computer firmware and we're gonna save it in the firmware. However, I do recommend deleting some of that name for some reason, some radios, they don't like longer than, actually it tells you, Longer than 32 characters. So just to be sure it's not longer than 32, I don't need any of that part. I would just put MT12 today's date. Well, I'm gonna put the firmware. Yeah, right, yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah. So I'm just gonna delete that part, save it. Maybe under 32, I'm not gonna count it. We're just gonna do it that way. So that's that, that's saved there. And the only other thing to do is the Lewis scripts. And this may or may not be needed to be done. But Wait, so gonna, that multi-module, is that already being, is it updated already? That's or? already in there. But okay. just to make sure we have all the text generated for like the different options, we're gonna make sure we have the Lewis scripts in there too. Okay. Um, so we're gonna download, my download's right here, Lewis script, we're gonna open that folder. Did I miss where you downloaded that from? It was just really quick. It's like instant. Where was so it? So all I'm doing is, Wait, hold on double clicking it okay. and then it would download but so it's over there yeah see look popped yeah, yeah, up. i saw that okay there the lewis grip granted i've done this multiple times now so it's going to show four you probably won't see for if you're doing it for the first time you won't see four but it's going to open up we need to go back to the downloads and then we need double to it. extract it extract all we have to unzip it because it's got the little zipper on it so we got to extract the files just going to extract it to the same place here and then copy, then we're gonna go back to the USB drive, which is what the radio is. And then we're gonna click over the scripts and hit paste. And it's gonna overwrite anything that's missing, it's gonna put in there. 
So anything the radio didn't have prior with the newer updates is gonna go in there. So now that's there and you're done. From there, get in the radio, I can go to model, I can go to page over, I can scroll till I go to the receiver and we're in the multi and you'll see DSM somewhere. Yep, there it is. Oh, wait, we're not done. Sorry, I jumped a skip. I skipped a step. So once we've put the folder in there, we have to actually update it. So I need to push system one time, I need to press over to the SD card page. Then I need to go to firmware. Now I need to find that file that we just did, that AETR 1.3.4.0 is the newest as of this video. And we need to click it. And then we need to flash the internal module. Completely brain farted that one. So now it's writing. So now we will have the new firmware um, for the multi-module on this radio. Almost. There it is. Flash successful. Click OK. Now we can get out of there. Model. Page over. And let's go... Let's find it now. Okay, we're already in DSM. Where's that DSMR? DSMR, that's what we're looking for, which you could still bind auto, it should select DSMR, but you have DSMR, and then there's a couple others in there. I think they added one of the other ones for you guys on the surface. You got Kyosho, you got some Losi ones. Traxxas is in there, and then I want to say SLT. Pretty, that might actually be a sub -build. So, it's different ones in there. If you want to see the full list of what's actually in it, two things you can check. Supported protocols on multimodule.org, and that will give you the full list. The, if you click one, it'll tell you like the different things that are in it. Um, like SLT down in there. Um, and it gives you some tr tips and tricks on how to set it up as well for basic stuff, like what the different channels assigned to. There's Traxxas. Um, the other thing is if you want to know, say you have an older version of multi-module, you want to know what the difference is, you can go to the GitHub page right here. And then you can go to releases and then the change log. That kind of gives you a good update of what, like Traxxas, uh, TQ protocol, um, et cetera, what's available, DSM, a couple of things they've done, forward programming, and then you can view the different versions of wow. it and what they've done. Okay. So you can click releases here, and that's 1.4, 1.33, you can see what stuff they've done, um, various, but they've added a lot of like Kyosho and Losi and stuff like that. They've added a bunch of different firmwares for the Surface. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there, guys, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you update the MP12.